When I was in the seventh grade, I had this pair of shorts that were, well, embarrassing. They were way too short, they were pleated, they were plaid, and they were everything that you were not supposed to wear to school if you didn't want to get beat up. But I wore them anyway because my grandma had made them and I loved her, and it felt like some kind of betrayal not to wear those to school. And so I did. Well, one day this boy named Mike, who was one of the most popular kids in school, showed up with almost the identical pair of shorts. And it had me wondering if maybe I wasn't so uncool after all. I mean, this kid who was so popular was wearing my clothing to school. And then five minutes later, I saw a sign from the student council. It said, Spirit Day, wear your nerdiest clothes on Monday. It was Nerd Day and he was dressed up as me. The truth is, I was a nerd. I enjoyed Michael Crichton books. I loved Star Trek TNG and thought Data was a phenomenal character. I would geek out on old baseball stadiums and sketch them out and build models at home. I was a nerd, and this was back when being a nerd was really, really uncool. I mean, you had TV shows in the 80s and 90s where the nerd could be barely accepted into the crowd. You had Urkel and you had Screech and they were tropes to be tolerated, not characters to be loved. So the first time I saw the character of Neville Longbottom, I cringed. I saw way too much of myself in him. Socially awkward, anxious, unable to fit into the crowd. That was me. I was so much like Neville. And I was scared that this was yet another trope. But that's not what J.K. Rowling does. She turns Neville into one of the most fearless and beloved characters in the entire Harry Potter universe. And none of that would have happened without Professor Sprout. From an instructional standpoint, Sprout is amazing. Her classes are hands-on, everyone is actively learning, they're engaging in deep thinking, and this is in a class that people typically don't love. Herbology is not considered the greatest of the wizarding arts and sciences, but she makes it that way. What makes her more amazing, though, is how she treats Neville. She creates a refuge for Neville where he can grow in confidence. And then something happens. That confidence becomes courage. Until you see this moment where Neville stumbles forward, tattered and ragged, stuttering, and he challenges Voldemort in the end of the last book. And you don't see Sprout in the movie, which is too bad. You hardly see her in the movie at all. But I, I'm, I'm imagining that she's there in the crowd and she is unastonished and unsurprised. And that's because she has seen something in Neville that other teachers never saw from the very get-go. Neville isn't shocking her with his bravery. He's confirming everything she has always believed about him from day one. And that's what great teachers do. They bring out the best in all of their students. They believe things about their students that even the students can't believe about themselves. 